Hey class, this video is on similar figures. Um, so let's just going to get to it. this beginning part is has a lot of definitions. We'll get to three examples where we're going to be determining if two figures are similar, um, identifying missing side lengths, and then get to a an application that has a real world um, example. Okay. All right. So this first part kind of already filled out for you. So similarity, um, it is. So two figures are similar if the second can be obtained from the first by a series or sequence of transformations or dilations. We have this triangle ABC, which is right here. This symbol here is the symbol for similar. It's similar to DEF. So I'm just going to draw, and I want you guys to draw this as well. Um, we're going to put another triangle here. I'm just going to kind of slant it a little bit. I'm going to draw something that looks like this. And keep going. All right, I'll put a right angle here, and it was DEF, so I'll put DEF because for this one it went in that order. Um, all right, so these two things can be classified as similar, like not exactly because I just kind of drew it freehand. Um, but the sequence of transformation so, first of all, it was rotated a little bit and then it was dilated to make it a little bit bigger, so it's an enlargement. Um, so that means that since we can identify those transformations this is a similar or these are similar um, figures to each other okay all right so let me go and give you the next part so proportional relationship and we've dealt with this for scale factor and dilations so it's a relationship where two things with a tooth a relationship between two things with a common ratio so off to the sides um, of these two triangles I was going to put the side lengths of this bigger one is six eight and ten and off to the smaller one, it is three, four, and five. So these two things have um, a common ratio in that if I compare the corresponding parts, corresponding parts being like this longer side right here for the eight, that corresponds with this four. This six off to the left corresponds with the three. This 10 corresponds with the five. Um, now, it's easy to match up because they're they're in like the right orientation. But if I were to switch it, you're still able to find out which one corresponds with which side. But if you look at it, they all have a ratio of two to one, meaning everything that was that was two units is now one unit. What's really happening there is that our scale factor. I'll put SF. Scale factor is one half. Right, right. This triangle is is half as big as this uh, pre-image triangle. Okay. And just off to the right, I put this nice little chart here um, to help you determine right, the numbers for, for a scale factor. Like what is that? What happens with that figure? So if it's between zero and one, the we have a smaller um, item than the original. If it's equal to one, it's the same size as the original, same exact thing. If it's bigger than one, this is larger, right? So we have a scale factor of one half. Um, so it's getting smaller because that's in between zero and one. Okay, next thing is a proportion. This is going to be pretty much how we um, figure out these problems. Um, so proportion is an equation with two ratios or fractions. It looks like this. We have a fraction equal to another fraction. So I have A over B equal to C over D. Okay, um, now I know when we have fractions, it is, it's always tough because, right, we're like, what do we do with it? How to, like, it's kind of a obstacle in our way of trying to solve an equation. So how do we solve it? We use something it called we cross multiply. Okay, so cross multiply meaning if we have right a over b equal to c over d, you know I'll write that over here. Use my red pen. I'm just gonna draw an arrow going diagonal from b to c and then from a to d. We multiply those two things and we set them equal to each other. So I'm just going to squeeze it underneath. It doesn't really matter which order you go. So A times D is AD add equal to B times C, which is just BC. All right, so what's nice about this is um, right, we have fractions. We multiply. We don't have any more fractions for, um, right at that point. Uh, but we're going to go over in class of, of why, does it, why is that possible and then um, really why does it help us. Okay, so we're going to use that idea to help us with this. Example one is determine whether triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Now, it is not enough to just say, yeah, they look about the same shape, maybe a different size. No, we're going to prove this with side lengths from these triangles. Um, 
So we have two examples that's kind of crowded here, but we're gonna look at example A for, or example A1. Um, and you, what you wanna do is you wanna compare the sides, like which one corresponds with which one. So let's look at this one right here. I'm gonna set up a fraction, a first fraction here. Um, let's look at this line segment AB, that length is eight. Um, that corresponds with this one over here, DE. All right, um, so DE is 12. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put eight from what we started with, and put 12 on the denominator, okay? Now, whenever we, we ever get to fractions, I know students always, right, you gotta be careful with how you set these up, right? Um, always go from left to right. The left one is gonna go on the top of the fraction, the right one is gonna go on the bottom. Don't just think like, oh, the bigger one always goes on the bottom, or the smaller one always goes on the top. It really depends on um, the order that you're going, okay? And then for this, we're gonna have this six right here for AC, that corresponds with this one, DF. Um, that is eight units long. So I'm gonna put six from here over eight. All right, so first, second, right? We put that on the top and bottom. All right, I'm gonna use my black pen here. We're gonna cross multiply. Um, and I'm gonna always, really, I normally start with the top left. So we're gonna multiply eight times eight. Well, eight times eight, is 64. I always put equal to. That's gonna be equal to 12 times six. Now 12 times six, if you're not sure what it is, just multiply it off to the side, but 12 times six is 72. Okay, now at this point, there's no simplifying, it's already simplified. We have 64 equal to 72. Since they're not equal to, that means they're not similar, so just gonna put new, comma, they are not similar. They look like it. but they do not, yeah, I'll put a bullet point, but they're not similar to each other. Okay, next one. Um, so let's look at this. We have, a, again, same triangles labeled A, B, C, and D, E, F. Um, and we have two of the three sides that are matched up. Let's go ahead and go to this one right here. I'm gonna start out with A, B. So A, B is eight. So we'll, we'll, just part, we'll just put a fraction with eight on top. So which side does that correspond with? Looks like it corresponds with DE just by looking at like the size and looks like it corresponds to that part. So that is 12, so I'll put eight over 12. All right, remember, start with that, whichever one we started with. So that is this first one. We're gonna go to AC, that is 10 units long. It looks like that corresponds with DF, which is 15 units long. Okay, so it looks like there's some bigger numbers here, so let's just be careful with this. Um, let's multiply eight times 15. Um, I'm gonna put that off to the side here. Eight times 15. Well, that'll be 40, carry the four. Eight times one is eight plus four is 12. So this is right here. That is 120. And then multiplying 12 times 10. Well, 12 times 10, where you just add a zero to the end of the 12. So that's also 120. So since they're equal to each other, that means that yes, these two triangles are similar. All right, there we go. Um, so not too hard there. We just, I think the hardest part is just setting up the fraction. Make sure that you're setting them correctly. If you begin at one triangle for the first fraction, begin at that same triangle on that second fraction. Okay. All right, let's get to the back side. So this is going to be where we have a little bit more math involved. Um, example two is quadrilateral A. A, B, C, D is similar to quadrilateral um, Y, X, or sorry, W, X, Y, Z. So it tells us it's similar. That, we're not determining if it is similar. They're just, they just are, okay? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a proportion to find the missing measures. So what I did, like just terribly, is I drew two quadrilaterals. Um, if you notice on each angle, they have like arcs here. It's just, all it means is if they have one arc, they're congruent, they're equal to each other. Um, Right, if it has two, they're congruent, three, and then four congruent right to each other. Um, so that, that is, in case you're wondering what that is. Now here, we're gonna look at, we have three of the four um, sides for each quadrilateral. Um, so what we're gonna do in these boxes here, just to kind of help set it up, you don't always have to do this, but I think it's important to right, take our time with this. So let's look at, look at this 13, so that's AD. Um, so I'm just gonna put on here, we're gonna have 13. So that corresponds to which part over here? It looks like it's WZ. 
Um, right, it's in between the one and the four arc, so one and four, that is 19.5. Um, I'm gonna go to BC, it doesn't matter order for this. BC, that is 12. So where does that correspond with? Looks like that's the M right here. So this is 12 over M. And then looks like on the bottom part we have 10 over 15. Okay. So then at this point, um, to set up a proportion, we can use two of these three fractions. It doesn't matter like if we switch them, right? it's still gonna be the same thing. Um, I'm gonna go to using these two here. I don't. I probably don't want to use this one. It is a decimal, but you know, let's, let's stick away with that decimal. You can still get the same answer with it, um, but I'm just gonna use it a different way, or, or just use two different ones. So let's use the 12 over m, and then the 10 over 15. All right. Now let's go and cross multiply. So we have m times 10. So m times 10 is m10, or, or you always put the coefficient in front. So 10m equal to. Uh, 12 times 15, always do some scratch work here. Don't just look at it. So 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 1. This will be 3. Placeholder, and then 1 and 5. Or just make sure you're organized when you, when you multiply with double digits. This is 180. All right. Now this is... This becomes a one-step equation at this point, and this is something you guys all know how to do. We have 10m equal to 180. You're just gonna divide both sides by 10, right, because it's multiplying, so we're not gonna subtract. We're always gonna divide to get rid of multiplication. 10 divided by 10 is one, so in this case, we're just gonna have m equal to 180 divided by 10 is just 18. Like zeros canceled out, um, but it is just m equal to 18. So I'm gonna just put where m is, I'm just gonna put 18 units, un. All right, not too hard there. So we have fractions, set them equal to each other, cross multiply and divide. All right, let's get to this. So we have a, a word example. Um, we have two parts that we're gonna draw it to kind of figure it out what we're, what we're gonna do here, and then we're gonna solve it. So looking at this, uh, it says a fire hydrant um, 2.5 feet high, cast the shadow that is uh, a, a, a five foot shadow. How tall is a street lamp that casts a 26 foot shadow? So, and then it says let H represent the height of the street lamp. So let's go ahead and draw something here. Um, it's probably gonna look like a triangle, so let's just get at that. So let's begin with this fire hydrant. I'm gonna do the best that I can to draw a fire hydrant. It's gonna be terrible, okay? It always is. Um. How do I do this? Okay, I'm gonna go like this. Okay, um, that's not that good, but uh, you guys get the idea. So let's go and put that this is 2.5. And then right over here, it's gonna cast a shadow. I'm just gonna scribble some stuff, whatever. This is five feet. Okay. And then Really, that's what's happening here. So we have like this, this triangle that's formed from the fire hydrant and the shadow. I just drew a diagonal line because it's kind of going from the top of the fire hydrant to the bottom of the, sh or top of the shadow, far left. All right, let's get to drawing a street lamp. Uh, let's also do this. So street lamp, we don't know how tall it is. So let's just go and draw a street lamp for the fun of it. Uh, street lamp. That's my street lamp, guys. Uh, so this, we don't know how tall it is. So we're just going to put H. And this casts a shadow. Let's go and draw a shadow over here. Mm, okay, you guys get the idea. Yeah, I'll draw a dashed line. And this shadow we know is 26 feet long. Okay. So we have two triangles. We, we All we need to do is we need to look at the corresponding parts here. So looking at this, let's look at, we're gonna compare the fire hydrant to the street lamp. So the fire hydrant is 2.5. The street lamp, we don't know how tall that is. So we're gonna put H. Right, and just, just like the second example, this is how we're gonna set it up. Uh, let's look at the bottom parts here, the shadow part. The shadow for the fire hydrant is five feet. That corresponds with the shadow of the street lamp, which is 26 feet. Okay, so let's go in across multiply. So let's multiply um, H times five, which is five H. Okay. 
And then we're gonna multiply, ooh, sorry, that's not, it's supposed to be 26. 2.5 times 26, that's gonna be kinda hard to do, so let's go ahead and put, just multiply off to the side. All right, just time consuming, don't confuse this with being hard. So this will be 30, put zero here, carry the three. Uh, this will be 10 plus three, which is 13. Placeholder of zero. Two times six is 12, we'll put a one, and that becomes five. All right, let's add some stiff. This will be zero, five, and six. Now, we'll have to take into account our decimal. So decimal is one space, so we're gonna move it one space. So this is, it's 65.0, which, it's fine, it's just 65. All right, <clears throat> so now what we do is we divide both sides by five. Remember, we're finding the, the height of the street lamp. Um, we're gonna have H equal to. Now to short divide, five can go into six once. So I'm gonna put, I'm oh, sorry, one with the remainder of one. Um, and then it could go into five three times. So this is H equal to 13. You could just long divide if you need to. Uh, we're going to put 13 feet. And there we go. So just like the, the second example. All right, guys, we're going to practice this quite a bit. Let me know if you guys got questions. Bye.